Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 11 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. In the previous video, we started discussing the chemical properties of alkanes and I told you that there are seven properties that we will be studying. The first was substitution, second combustion, third controlled oxidation, fourth isomerization, fifth was aromatization, sixth reactions with steam and seventh was pyrolysis. We have studied the first one that is substitution and we did the substitution of halogens, halogenation, nitration and sulfonation in the previous video. In this video, we'll be doing the next two properties which are combustion and controlled oxidation. So let us start with the property that is combustion. I told you that alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons. They do not need to react because the octets of every atom, octets of carbons and the duplets of hydrogen are satisfied and they do not need to react. Yet, imagine even if all the bonds are satisfied, if you burn something in the presence of a lot of oxygen, that's a lot of energy. So if you burn something, that substance may still, that heat, which, I mean, that ignition that starts, that causes the bonds to break. And since alkanes are hydrocarbons, they consist of carbon and hydrogen. When the bonds break, the carbon part combines with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and the hydrogen part reacts with uh, oxygen to form water. And therefore, alkanes can very easily burn. If you give it a little the right ignition temperature, then they would simply burn and break down and burn. So combustion is a process that does take place. And I, if you remember in the previous video, I told you that oxidation, they do not undergo oxidation. They do not react with acids and bases. They do not undergo oxidation. They do not undergo reduction. Yet these processes can be carried out if the proper conditions are given. They would not spontaneously do it, but you would either use a catalyst. So uh, in this, let us see how this happens. Combustion is burning. This happens due to the drastic situation that you are just burning it. Excess of oxygen is present and the temperature, the ignition temperature is present. Then the alkane would simply burn off and result in the formation of the carbon part of the alkane will give carbon dioxide and the hydrogen part would give oxygen. So alkanes on heating with oxygen in the presence of air or in the presence of air, they are completely oxidized to carbon dioxide and water with the evolution of a large amount of heat. These, are, these reactions are highly exothermic. When something burns, you know how much of heat is produced. So these reactions are highly exothermic. For example, you have methane here. Methane combines with oxygen and in methane there is one carbon and four hydrogens. In a molecule of carbon dioxide, there is one carbon and two oxygens. So you need one car, if there is one carbon, one molecule of carbon dioxide will be produced. There are two hydrogens, so two molecules of water will be produced. So in accordance to that, you have to choose one molecule of CO2. So two oxygens are required by carbon and twice H2O, two atoms of oxygen are required by hydrogen to completely turn into uh, water. So in a balanced chemical equation, how many molecules of oxygen would be required to completely burn methane? Two molecules, right? Or four atoms of oxygen, which means two molecules. So we say that methane combines with two molecules of oxygen to give one molecule of or one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. If we talk in terms of moles, one mole of methane will combine with two moles of oxygen to give you one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. And the molar heat of combustion here, enthalpy of combustion is minus 890. Minus means that the heat is being given out. It is being lost. So this is the heat that is given out, which is 890 kilojoules for one mole of methane, which is a large amount. Come to butane now. Butane is C4H10. So how many molecules of butane would be required or of oxygen would be required to satisfy this? Now how many carbon dioxide molecules will be formed? There are four carbons, so four carbon dioxide molecules will be formed. For four carbon dioxide molecules, how many oxygens are required? Eight, right? And there are 10 atoms of hydrogen and one molecule of water has two hydrogens. So this, this 
uh, the hydrogen 10 atoms of hydrogen will form five molecules of water which means that five atoms of hydrogen will be required so you need 8 plus 5 which is 13 atoms of oxygen are required if we talk in terms of molecules but oxygen is not present as O, only O, nascent oxygen. It is present as O2 molecules. So to, to write a balanced equation, a molar equation, we will say how many molecules of oxygen would be required. 13 atoms are required. So if there are 13 molecules, then half of the 13 molecules would be required. Right? So we say in a molar equation, we say C4H10 plus 13 by 2 moles of oxygen will give you 4 moles of carbon dioxide and 5 moles of water. And when 1 mole of methane burns, it gives out heat that is 2875.84 kilojoules of heat is given out, which is even larger. Of course, the molecule is also larger. It's a much larger amount of heat. Looking at this, as I explained, how many oxygens would be required because all of the carbon is going to turn into carbon dioxide, all of the hydrogen is going to turn into water. We know that the alkanes have a general equation, general formula. And what is the general formula? CnH2n plus 2 is the general formula for alkanes. So instead of writing individual uh, equations like this, we can have a general equation of combustion. So we do that that the general equation of combustion we know the general equation the general formula for alkanes is CnH2n plus 2. So it will result in the formation of n molecules of carbon dioxide and how many molecules of water? 2n. Every molecule of water needs 2 hydrogen. So there are 2n plus 2. So 2n every 2 atoms of hydrogen is going to form one molecule. So 2n will form n molecules and these two will form one more molecule of water. So it will be n plus 1. So we'll say n plus 1 molecules of water are formed. And then according to this, how much of oxygen would be required? You need n, 2n atoms of oxygen for carbon dioxide and you need half of this. That is n plus 1 you need n plus 2, n plus 2, half of this would be n plus 1, n plus 1 atoms of oxygen. So, but since, which means 3n and n plus 1, that is the number of molecules, that is O2, every molecule of oxygen has 2 atoms, so you will divide it by 2. You need 3n plus 1 atoms of oxygen, but one molecule has 2 atoms, so you will divide the number of molecules, how many atoms you need by the number of atoms in a molecule divided by two. That will give you the number of molecules of oxygen required. Just as in this case, you noticed how we needed 13 atoms and we cannot get atoms of oxygen. So we took 13 upon two molecules of oxygen. The same thing here, we need 3n plus 1 atoms of oxygen. So we'll take 3n plus 1 upon 2 molecules of oxygen, right? And then you get n molecules of carbon dioxide and n plus 1 molecules of water. And each of these I mean, reactions would be highly exothermic. Since these would be highly exothermic, they produce a lot of heat. These are the reactions that can be used to produce heat. And that is what they are used for. That's the reason why petroleum is, or petrol, or any of the petroleum products, they are used as fuels. Because the, when they burn, they produce a lot of heat. So due to the large amount of heat that is liberated, they are used as fuels. Now, you know, looking at these equations, you get the numbers that the fractions that are given here. It gives you a feeling that it is complicated. But once you understand it and you do it, you will not need to memorize these uh, equations. You just know logically that this would be the number of uh, oxygen molecules required. Now, sometimes if the amount of oxygen that is given is not enough, then incomplete combustion takes place. When incomplete combustion takes place of an alkane, it results in the formation of carbon black. That is only carbon. The product here, when 
oxygen is not enough you will not get carbon dioxide rather you will get carbon as the product for example when methane burns in less supply of oxygen so the combustion is not complete it is incomplete then the carbon forms the carbon dioxide but the hydrogen uh, sorry the hydrogen forms water but the carbon remains as carbon and it has not burnt to form carbon dioxide this carbon pure carbon in this form is solid it is black in color and therefore it is used in paints it is used as a pigment and incomplete combustion is uh, leads to the formation of carbon black it is used to form ink it is used to form uh, used to make printer ink it is um, used to make black pigments and filters one very ancient you know makeup uh, stuff that has been used in india is coal that is kajal and if you i don't know if uh, you've noticed now we get kajal commercially now in the time of our grandparents and maybe kajal was not uh, sold commercially people would prepare it at home by burning ghee and with a covered lid it, you know what appears to be so complicated in these equations is actually so simple if you relate it to real life so what would they do they would burn a candle or a diya in ghee and they would cover it up with a uh, with a utensil why do they cover it up with a utensil so that the oxygen supply is not enough now they will not cover it completely this utensil they cover it up with have few holes here and there so that a little limited supply of oxygen is produced it, it is available so when this diya burns it burns in it produces incomplete combustion and the carbon or the soot that is produced that will get deposited on the lid that you have covered it with so when you when all of it all of the key burns out you take that you remove it you collect it and then you apply it in your eyes and it has been a makeup routine that has been in our country for god knows how many hundreds and thousands of years so that is how uh, incomplete combustion leads to the formation of carbon black or soot then we come to the third property chemical property which is controlled oxidation again in the previous video i told you that oxidation does not take place they do not readily happily uh, carry out oxidation or reduction but if you give the right conditions even this burning combustion is nothing but oxidation only the conditions were drastic so if we do not have such drastic conditions of completely burning it or carrying out the limited uh, burning or con uh, the Uh, what incomplete combustion we can carry out this oxidation in a controlled manner make the conditions such that the oxidation reaction has to take place raise the temperature a little provide a catalyst give it help if it is not doing it on its own give it help so when the molecule gets that kind of a help in the form of a catalyst in the form of increased pressure the molecules are crushed together oxygen and carbon so you are kind of crushed together so you have to interact with each other so all right they give up and they interact and oxidation takes place so alkanes when they are heated with a regulated supply of it is not a full supply of oxygen like in combustion it is regulated briefly little bit little bit oxygen is given in a regulated supply of oxygen and the pressure is high under these conditions and they also provide a catalyst so they are heating it up the temperature is higher so they are kind of exciting the molecules to act and then they are providing the oxygen in a limited quantity in a continuous supply they are applying pressure to them kind of crushing them together okay come on react and they also have catalysts like a teacher pushing them yes you can do it come on come on you can do it so there is someone cheering them on the catalyst who will help okay i'll i'll make your friendship you come here you come here join hands make a bond have a friendship so with a lot of help you can make them react so in the presence of suitable catalysts they give a variety of oxidation products for example methane combines with oxygen now methane will combine with oxygen under different conditions to give different products for example methane when it combines with oxygen in the presence of copper 
at 523 Kelvin and at 100 atmospheric pressure, it results in the formation of methanol. It results in the formation of an alcohol. The same methane reacts with oxygen to with in the presence of Mn2O3 manganese oxide and when you heat it with manganese oxide which is a catalyst it does not give us an alcohol it gives us an aldehyde it results in the formation of methanol which is an aldehyde now ethane in the presence of oxygen or sorry reacts with oxygen in the presence of manganese diacetate or manganese 2 acetate and if you heat it with it it results in the formation of a carboxylic acid you get ethanoic acid so we notice by changing the conditions, by changing the catalyst, the uh, alkane can be oxidized and it can be oxidized to give us different products. If, we, if I want to get an alcohol from an alkane, I would use copper, I would use 100 atmospheric pressure, I would use 523 Kelvin. But if I wanted an aldehyde instead, I, all I have to do is change the conditions and I used manganese uh, oxide and I heated it with manganese oxide instead of getting alcohol I got aldehyde and if I did not want that I wanted a carboxylic acid I would again make it react in the presence of manganese diacetate and I would heat it and I would get the carboxylic acid instead. So you can change the product by changing the conditions. Then. Alkanes, they usually resist oxidation. I told you that they do not want to get oxidized. But one was that you provided the conditions which forced it to react. If the alkane is branched, then it will have primary hydrogens 1 degree. It will have secondary hydrogens 2 degree. It will have tertiary hydrogens 3 degree. A primary hydrogen is a hydrogen which is attached to a carbon which is attached only to one other carbon. A secondary hydrogen is a hydrogen which is attached to a carbon. Actually, the carbon is secondary, which is attached to a carbon, which is attached to two other carbons. And a tertiary hydrogen would be a hydrogen which is attached to a tertiary carbon, which means a carbon which is attached to three other carbons. So a hydrogen which is attached to a tertiary carbon, imagine the carbon is here. It has one methyl group here, one methyl or maybe bigger than a methyl group. It could be ethyl, it could be propyl, whatever. So this hydrogen, which is attached to a carbon, which is already attached to three bulky groups, becomes a little weak. So it has a possibility of leaving the carbon because there's so much a crowd, bigger uh, groups around it. It kind of gets crowded and that is the hydrogen which becomes slightly. That is the hydrogen which can be targeted for oxidation. So that is what is done. Alkanes, they usually resist oxidation, but alkanes having a tertiary hydrogen atom in them, that is a hydrogen which is attached to a tertiary carbon, it can be oxidized to the corresponding alcohols. And when a tertiary uh, hydrogen leaves, it results in the formation uh, and gets oxidized, that part gets oxidized, it results in the formation of alcohol. OH. It adds the oxygen to it and the oxygen and the hydrogen attaches itself to the oxygen instead and therefore results in the formation of alcohol. For example, you have this 2-methylpropane which is the tertiary hydrogen here. A hydrogen, this is the tertiary hydrogen, a hydrogen which is attached to a carbon which is attached to three other carbon atoms. So this hydrogen is a tertiary hydrogen. So when you make it react with potassium permanganate, and your oxidation takes place, this hydrogen gets converted and it attaches itself to the oxygen and OH alcohol is formed. So you get CH3, C, CH3, CH3 remains as such and this hydrogen turns into the alcoholic group. So you get 2 methyl propane to all as the product. So these were the two properties of combustion and controlled oxidation. With this, I'll wrap up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.